Well, I'm back in the kitchen because my storytelling is not going to suit me. I can't seem to get focused. I can't get the camera right. I'm looking out the side instead of at the people. So I've been told. So I thought, well, just go back to the kitchen. We'll see what we can drum up there. Now you're aware of how small my kitchen is. So this is not going to be easy. But if you stick with me, I'm going to show you something you're going to like. Oh, it was back around the turn of the century, and I'm not talking about this century, I'm talking about a century ago, that a lady named Jenny Benedict, she was restaurateur, and she had written books, and I can't remember what else. She had a list of things under her title. She came up with a recipe that you can even find it in the stores today. But let me tell you, it's not going to be like my recipe. You're gonna to want to make your own instead of buying the store bought. This is more or less what you would use for hors d'oeuvres, socializing, parties, receptions, that sort of thing. And they're very nice, very attractive and people love them. If I love them, everybody does. So what this is called is Benedictine. My mother used to subscribe to the Louisville Courier Journal once a month. They had a magazine section and a lady named Sissy Gregg from Louisville, Kentucky, she published this magazine section and it was all good recipes. My mother would write down the ones she liked best and as long as I can remember, there were three recipes in the, uh, the 1959 magazine that my mother marked. And one of them, she put, this is the jam cake recipe. She had handwritten that above. That's the recipe she used every Thanksgiving and Christmas. Well, I used to work downtown Louisville on Guthrie, and Guthrie was just around the corner from Stewart Department Store. Everybody knows Stewart Department Store because it was one of the best stores in town. In their basement, they had a little restaurant, cafe, called the Colonnade, and on rare occasions, I would go there for lunch. And they always served Benedictine sandwiches. Well, they're made with cucumbers. I said, no, 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 I, I, I'm not interested in that. I never would eat the Benedictine sandwich. Well, years passed and I moved away from Louisville. Oh, many years passed. I ended up in Tennessee and I had learned to make Benedictine, and I discovered I really, really liked it. It was an ideal uh, hors d'oeuvre. So the office where I worked, we did a lot of receptions, luncheon, breakfast and things. Commissioner from Nashville, Nashville would come and we'd have to prepare some sort of refreshment when those people were around. So at least once a month, we had a social activity where there was food. I started making the Benedictine sandwiches and everybody loved them. They had never heard of Benedictine, didn't know what it was. And I explained to them where I got the recipe and who the lady was. So every time we had a social affair, I would take these little sandwiches and I'm going to try to show you how they're made. They're very simple. First, I've got my uh, one eight ounce cream cheese. It's kind of soft now. I'll be able to stir it up. And I've got about a tablespoon and a half of mayonnaise. That thins it down so it spreads easily. So I have to stir that up good. Try to get it mixed up, blended. And in doing so, I need to add a little 
accent. You're familiar with accent, I'm sure. I use it a lot. So, this won't take much. I'll see what I can get here. But I'm just going to put it in the hand. Mm, that might be about a teaspoonful. Maybe a little. Yeah, about a teaspoonful. And you probably won't need salt because accent has a salty taste anyway. So I'm going to blend this. And let it set a little bit. I'll set it aside. And the next thing we're going to add... is cucumber and onion. It takes about two tablespoons of each. Let me find my knife here. I'll cut off the peeling of this, this piece of cucumber. We can use this. We don't want the peeling. And I'll take the seeds out right here. Yeah, there we go. Let's get the seeds out of that. Now, I have the rest of the cucumber. And what I have done is I took this. It's an apple core, I think. And I went down in and I cored out the seeds as far as I thought I would need. I'm going to peel this off on the outside too, just what I think I need of this cucumber. And you can watch me peel. I'm not a professional chef, so I'm a slow worker. But I want it right. Yeah, take a couple more seconds. And I'll have the peeling off. Now, the time this is grated and pulsed a little, it will equal to about two tablespoons full. Yeah, I'll get the rest of the seeds out on this end. I didn't go all the way down inside. Yeah, we get those seeds out. I don't care for the seeds in the Benedictine. Open this up. I'm going to cut this in small pieces. Drop it down in this. The funny thing about this little machine is, I was looking for my ninja. Here's my ninja. I use it all the time for chopping. As you can see, see this is my ninja. Well, the cord's kind of short. I'm having a hard time getting it plugged in behind my microwave. So while I was looking for that, I found this in a box. I didn't know I had it. I don't think I've ever used it. So we're going to use it for the first time. Here, I'll cut up my cucumber. Small chunks. We're going to put this right in here. And then I've got a just happen to have a small onion. I like these little yellow onions. So, I think this will make about two tablespoons. Also, see if I can get to that outer layer off. And the other side. This is all I'm going to need here. Cut it. I 
same way as I did the kids over. It goes in the little chopper. You can tell I'm a professional cook, can't you? The way I chop, 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 chop. If I chop, chop, chop like they do, I wouldn't have any fingers. Now, in there she goes. We're going to see if this thing comes on now. I haven't tried it yet. It says chop. Okay. Well, guess what? I wonder why it won't chop. Well, I made a mess there, didn't I? Ah. Well, stay with me. Well, why won't that work? I think this goes back here. Here we go. We've got to get it on this, in this little slot. I didn't even see that. There we go. We got it fixed now. I should practice before I started this. There we go. That's going to work. I'm alive. Now let me look and see what I've got here. See if it's fine enough. Yep, that's going to do it. Take the little blades out. Now I'm going to put this in this dish because I need to take the juice out of it and it's hard to get the juice out of this. I'll get me another spoon. Get all of this out. You can see how it looks. Woo! This must be a hot onion because it's burning my eyes. I haven't had a hot onion in ages. I didn't know they could even buy them anymore. All right. All to the side. Now, what I do is I just Push it down, and I squeeze it back and let the juice just run down into the sink, because I don't want it soupy. Yeah, it's squeezing out pretty good. I could have found a better way of doing this, but it's working. As long as it works, I don't care. Get the job done. That just about got the juice out of it. Now, I can add it. To my cream cheese. into the cream cheese. Now you can guess at what's two tablespoons. That's exactly what I did. That's what my mama would have done. Got that taken care of. Now we got to blend it good. Get this little thing here settled. Stir it up good. Well, it's nice and blended. Yep, a little too much juice. Now, wipe this juice off.
going to add a cup of uh, nuts. What to do with them? There they are. Hidden. Now these nuts have been chopped. They're pecans. They've been chopped. You want them small. You don't want them too heavy because your sandwiches are going to be very small and you don't want your nuts to be too large for the sandwiches. So I'm going to see how much of this I'm going to need. May not need at all. Stir again. This is also a very good uh, St. Patrick's Day treat because when I get the green food coloring in it, you, it'll go out with your St. Patrick's Day celebration. I think that's enough pecans. I don't need all of those. You can guess at the pecans. It, you, just like you do anything else, you guess at it and say that's enough. Because oh, this is going to be on sandwiches. Now, here we go. We've got our little green food coloring. And uh, let's get that lid off. Haven't used it in a while. And it's just going to take a couple drops. Because I don't want it too green. Get that green in there. Gives it a little party color. What I'm doing. Get the coloring. Very light green. And you can make it as green as you want, but I don't like it very dark. That's that I've seen in the grocery. Too green. It just doesn't look real to me. Alright. This is ready. if I've forgotten anything. The next thing we have to do, I'm going to have to move a few things here because I have to get to my outlet. One nice thing about these kitchens, they sure did forget the outlets. And you got to have a lot of outlets when you're cooking. That's it. Benedictine to one side, and we're going to climb behind the microwave, unplug it, because I've got to plug in my electric knife. Now, this electric knife I've had about 40 years, and I've probably used it 40 times, which means I used it once a year, and that was for making these sandwiches. Okay, it's got a nice long cord. I won't have any trouble with it. I hope I don't have any problem with it like I did with the chopper. Got to pull this over. Over and above. Get it through there. Isn't this fun? Aren't you having fun? Yeah, of course it's fun. Anytime you're in the kitchen, it's fun. Well, let's see now. I'm just about to get it. Here we go. We've got the electric knife around here. Take her out. It's an oldie, I'm telling you. Get the blades out, see if I can remember how they go. When you haven't done something in a long time, you kind of forget. That's 
Got it. Thanks. Nope. Not got it. Not quite right. I think. Got them backwards. Folks. I wasn't expecting this. I thought things were going to work right. Let's see now. I believe I'm going to get it this time. Gotta get those little things in the right place. I should have done this before I started this. I would have known I was going to make a mistake. Now, I think I've got it. Still didn't catch. I must have, uh... It has to go. Well, we're going to use it anyway. trick must have come off. Well, if it goes flying across the room, just look for me at the hospital. That's where I'll be. I chose the Petridge Farm thin slice bread for this because you're making small sandwiches. And you don't want thick bread. So here's what I'm going to do. Is it two, four, five, six? These are small. I didn't expect them to be this little. But for practice, it won't matter. Now what I do, I'm going to dampen a paper towel a little bit because you've got to keep these sandwiches damp and I put them in a plastic container with a nice tight cover so that they'll they'll keep well until you want to serve them this is nice and damp so I'm going to put it in this container here's the lid and we're going to start making sandwiches Back to the Benedictine. Here we go. You see how thin these are? They're just perfect. It's party time. And we want this thin as well. Very thin. We're going to use a little knife. And find one. Yeah, this is better. Put it on with this little knife and spread it out good. Make sure it covers the whole sandwich bread. And you've got it ready all the way to the edge. Put your sandwich together like that. Now I'm going to put this one aside because they're so small, I can cut two at a time. Maybe even three. That'll save you a lot of time when you're preparing for a party. What I like about this too, for mothers with children, you cut the crust off, you throw them in a jiffy bag, and they've got just enough Benedictine on the crust for the kids to eat when they're sitting there watching TV. And they're just as good as the sandwiches are. So you see that one? It's ready. It goes aside with the other one. Lay them together perfect. Can you see what I'm doing? Let me put it up here. 
Get it up here where you can see. Now here goes the next one. Are you watching? Make sure it's very thin because you don't want it gooey. Alright, one more. There we go. I'm going to lay those together, get them as straight as I can, and let's see what happens with this electric knife. I hope it doesn't go flying across the room. Come on. Now, if you can see, let's get over here closer to the edge. I'm cutting the crust off. It's not going to work because these knives are not together. We'll see. I don't think it's going to work. I may have to use a cutting knife. Okay. Put these over here. You get to the other edge. Are you watching? that in a jiffy bag. Now, I'm going to use a bread knife for this because, here we go, this is an old bread knife with a bakelite handle. Let's see, and this bread is so small, I'm going to cut the sandwiches in four tiny pieces. Hold it with your hand and slice. <laughs> Turn it around, hold it with your fingers, and slice. Be sure and use a bread knife if you don't have an electric knife. Guess I'm going to have to go buy me a new electric knife now. Next thing I do, now this is a small container, but you want a large one if you're doing for a party. Because you want to be able to put a lot of little sandwiches in. See, this is... See how deep this is. I can get several little sandwiches. Right there are three sandwiches. You stack those in there side by side. And you keep cutting. And keep making sandwiches until you've got your container full. Or until you run out of Benedictine. And one a block of che um, cream cheese will go a long way when you're making something like this. I'm going to cut this. Let's see, there's my, there's my paper towel. Now, you don't want it wet, you just want it damp. And after you get them all in there, you just lay that paper towel on top, put your lid on, And they're ready. Just keep them refrigerated. Now there's another little hint that goes with this. And I forgot to get it out. But I'll show you anyway. Okay. I buy the already cooked bacon. And before I microwave it, I cut it. 
You can see they're about an inch and a quarter size. And if you like, after you cook the bacon, if, if you buy the regular bacon, you're going to fry it in the skillet. But with this ready bake or ready cooked bacon, you can put it in the microwave. Now we'll, we'll pretend this has been cooked. You can open up your little sandwich. I think this bread, the thin bread does, it's kind of gentle. You can lay that right in there and you won't have a better treat than the bacon on your Benedictine sandwiches. Put this back in here. I'm gonna make a, a whole lot more with this Benedictine. As you can see, there's a lot there and I didn't use very much. And then get my lid back on there. You definitely want to keep them covered until they're ready to eat. Things like that dry out pretty fast. So, with uh, with this, this will go into a little jiffy bag, and I can just sit and watch TV and drink my Dr. Pepper, and I'm happy. That's all it takes to make me happy. Unless it's a bad TV show. I hope you understood what I was trying to show you and how the little sandwiches work. You can spread them out any way you please. But I think you like using the thin bread because it's so easy to cut. It makes so many little sandwiches. And the other thing you can do, you can make your deviled eggs and add a little bit of yellow food covering Get your deviled egg real good, fine, and do the same thing. Do the very same thing with both sandwiches. You put them together, you cut them. Well, first of all, let's take, let's just say this is one of, uh, is a, the whole thing with deviled eggs on it. Not deviled egg, egg salad. I get those mixed up deviled eggs, egg salad, egg salad's what you want. There you go. Okay. You've got this layer that will show light green. Then you'll have a layer that will show the egg salad in yellow. And you cut those together and you've got Easter colors as far as I'm concerned the yellow and the light green, and small sandwiches, and kids will love that. All kids like uh, egg salad sandwiches anyway. I'm gonna let it go with that. Cover up my little sandwiches. Put the lid on. And when you've tried Benedictine, my way, my way is also Jenny Benedict's way 100 years ago more than a hundred years ago. So, if you run across the 1959 Sissy Gregg magazine section of the Louisville Courier Journal, look through that magazine, you'll find Jenny Benedict's Benedictine. I hope you have enjoyed this, although it was kind of clumsy. I could have done better if I was better prepared. Hard to prepare in a kitchen this size but I'm gonna have Benedictine sandwiches for lunch. And I hope maybe you'll try it too.